Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here, and in today's video we are talking about Chase credit cards, the ones that earn ultimate rewards points. And you know, the so-called Chase trifecta used to be the thing to talk about, to earn points for first class travel, to stay in five star hotels, etc. Now I say used to be because the trifecta has now expanded to include even more cards. But first of all, let's talk about how the trifecta works. Basically each card, each of the three, okay, or more, it earns points on different rewards categories. And typically you can then transfer those points onto one card, uh, for example, the Sapphire Reserve, which then makes the points more valuable, okay? On the Sapphire Reserve, points are worth 1.5 cents per point when redeemed for travel instead of the usual one cent. You can also transfer them to airlines as well. And this way you can earn loads of points and get a really good redemption value. But you see, the thing is Chase has now expanded its lineup so much that it isn't just three cards anymore. What comes after a trifecta? Well, trifecta is actually a term from betting on horse racing and in horse racing betting, what comes after a trifecta is actually a superfecta. One of our viewers actually pointed this out to me. I was going to say quadfecta, but uh, I think superfecta actually sounds better because, you know, in my mind, it could mean four or more. There's no definite number associated with it, but from horse racing, we know it means at least four. Now, personally, I have four chase cards that earn UR points, so I do have the superfecta. Now, Mrs. Credit Shifu has two chase cards, one of which I don't have. So between us together, we have five cards. What would that be? A pentafecta? You see what I mean? So I think the term superfecta is good. Let's say four or more. It's the superfecta. Anyway, if you haven't used this system before, it is an awesome system for earning points. A lot of people think it's the best system for earning points for free flights. I would say it's one of the best, but you can earn loads of points that you can use for business class, first class, five star hotels, amazing travel experiences, etc. And in this video, we are going to go through the whole Chase Superfecta again in 2020, tell you about all of the different points earning categories, all of the different benefits on each card. And at the end, we'll go through some specific things that are going on right now, how you can enhance the value of the Superfecta. So let's go. Now, first of all, there are three categories of cards. There are Sapphire cards, there are Freedom cards, and there are Ink cards. And the Ink cards are the business credit cards. In total, there are three variations of the Sapphire cards, okay? And you can only have one at a time. That is a rule. One of the Sapphire cards, the most basic one, is also not available to new applicants. You can only get it as a downgrade path from one of the other Sapphires. With the Freedom, there are also three different variations of the Freedom. You can actually have as many Freedoms as you like. And some people even have two accounts of the exact same Freedom card due to one, you know, getting it through a regular application and the other one as a downgrade. And there is a freedom, you know, like the Sapphire, there is a freedom card that is not available to new applicants anymore, which is simply called the freedom. Uh, and I don't think you can even get that one as a downgrade now, but many people are still grandfathered into it, including myself. Then there are three ink business cards and you can have all three at once. Then there are only three cards in the Superfecta that you can use to transfer points to airlines, okay? So whoever is creating their Superfecta will definitely want at least one of these three cards, all right? And they are the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Inc. Business, and the Chase Sapphire Reserve. In addition to being able to transfer points to airlines, um, on any of these three cards, points take on higher value when redeeming for travel through that card, okay? So for the Sapphire Preferred and the Ink Preferred, it's 1.25 cents in value when redeeming for travel. And for the Sapphire Reserve, it's 1.5 cents in value when redeeming for travel. So this is important. Remember this fact when we're going through all the cards because no matter where you earn the points, you can transfer the points onto your Sapphire card or your Ink card or your Sapphire Reserve card from any of the other cards. Even if they're marked as cashback, even if they promote it as cashback, it's actually still points and you can still transfer them over, all right? Even close family members can transfer points as well. You can absolutely transfer points to your spouse. So Mrs. Credit Shifu can transfer her Chase points from any of her Freedom cards over to my Sapphire and get that higher value, all right? Very important. All right, now let's go through all of the cards that could possibly make up a Superfecta and we'll tell you how much points they earn per dollar for all of their categories. All right, so first of all, we have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which earns 10 points per dollar on lift rides. This is a temporary promotion until March 2022. It also earns 3x on travel and 3x on dining. The current sign-up bonus is 50,000 points for $4,000 in spend in the first three months. This is what I call a tier four or premium card in my five tier system of uh, credit cards. 
and it's at this tier that you get things like lounge access, etc. And indeed, the Chase Sapphire Reserve provides lounge access through Priority Pass, and it also provides a $300 travel credit. The annual fee is $550, but for renewals, it's renewing at $450 until the end of this year. Okay, next card is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. It gives you 5x, 5 points per dollar on lift rides. That's temporary as well until March 2022. Travel, it's 2x. Dining, it's 2x. The current bonus is 80,000 points for spending $4,000 in the first three months, and the annual fee is $95. Then the Sapphire, this is the one that you can only downgrade to, okay? You cannot apply for this card as a new applicant. Um, it's 2x on dining, that's its only category, and it has no transfer partners. You can book travel through Ultimate Rewards, but you can't transfer points to airlines, uh, and the annual fee is zero. There's no annual fee on this card. So it would only be worth downgrading to the Sapphire if you had the Inc. Business Preferred card, because then you'd still maintain the ability to transfer to airlines. Because remember, you can only have one Sapphire at a time. So if you have the Sapphire Reserve or something, you couldn't have that and this Sapphire, all right? You're done. So remember that. It's only worth downgrading to it if you've also got an Inc. Business card. Then we have the Freedom Flex. This is actually a brand new card from Chase, and it earns 5x on travel booked through the Chase portal, okay? Not just any travel, only travel booked through Chase. Dining, it earns 3x. Drugstores, 3x. 5x on rotating categories that change every quarter. Uh, and the current quarter is uh, Walmart and PayPal. That's only on up to $1,500 worth of spending though. And also 5x on lift rides, and that's a temporary benefit that ends on 3-2022, okay? March 2022. Current bonus is $200 or 20,000 points uh, for $500 worth of spend. And there is an additional part to that bonus, which is a temporary five points per dollar at grocery stores on $12,000 worth of spending in the first year, which is incredible, okay? And the card comes with no annual fee. So Chase Freedom Flex is really packed with benefits. A few temporary benefits, a few permanent ones, but uh, very, very exciting indeed. If you haven't got this card, do check it out. Then we have the Freedom Unlimited, which earns five points per dollar on travel through Chase, same as the Freedom, five points per dollar on lift rides. That offer ends March 2022. Then you've got 3x on dining, 3x on drug stores, and on non-category spend, this card earns 1.5 points per dollar. And I haven't listed the non-category spend on any other card because they just earn one point per dollar, but on this, it's 1.5 points per dollar, so we have to mention that. And again, this card has no annual fee. Then we have the Chase Freedom. This earns 5x on lift rides, again, temporary benefit. Five points per dollar on the rotating categories. Currently it's Walmart and PayPal. And there's no bonus at the moment because the card is closed to new applicants. So the only people who have this card are those who are grandfathered into it from before, including myself. I have both this card and the Freedom Flex. So I have two freedoms, which means I double up on the quarterly categories. I get $3,000 worth of spending to get that 5X per quarter instead of just one, uh, 1,500. And your fee on the Freedom card is zero. All right, now we're getting through into the Ink Business cards. We start with the Ink Business Preferred. It has four categories, travel, 3X, shipping, 3X, internet and phone services, cable, 3X and advertising, 3X, limited to $150,000 in combined spend per year though, and the annual fee is $95. Ink Business Cash, office supply stores, internet, cable and phone, it's five points per dollar, and that's limited to 25,000 per year. And then you've got gas and restaurants, it's two points per dollar, Again, limited to another $25,000 uh, per year. The bonus on this card though is pretty good. It's $500 slash 50,000 points. Okay, you can take either or, and that's for spending $3,000 in the first three months, and there's no annual fee. Then we have the Ink Unlimited, which is just 1.5 points per dollar on everything, and it has the same bonus, $500 slash 50,000 points for $3,000 worth of spend in the first three months, and there's also no annual fee. So does the Chase system allow you to collect more points than with say Amex or City? Well, that depends on your spending, but I would say right now the Chase system is really competitive. The 5X on travel booked through the Chase portal competes directly with Amex's 5X on air travel, uh, air tickets booked directly through airlines on the Amex Platinum, and also City's 5X on travel on the City Prestige. Just make sure you check the price though directly with the airline or hotel, just to make sure it's the same as through the Chase portal, because if it's more, then you're not really getting a good deal, even if you're getting 5X. On dining spend, the Chase Superfector actually lags behind Amex and City. Uh, with Amex, the Amex Gold earns 4X, four points per dollar on restaurants worldwide. And City, with the City Prestige, it's 5X on dining. Whereas with Chase, the highest multiplier is just 3X on the Chase Sapphire Reserve. 
But on supermarket spending, Chase is getting really competitive right now. Even though the Amex Gold has been the clear winner on this for a long time with its 4X on US supermarkets, if you have a new Freedom Flex or Freedom Unlimited account, you're actually gonna get 5X, five points per dollar at supermarkets on up to $12,000 a year in spending, which should cover most people. In addition, the Freedom Flex and the Freedom have the 5X rotating categories, which normally covers at least one quarter of grocery shopping as well. Look, this quarter, one of the categories is Walmart, where you can buy groceries. Now on the business side, it's a little bit too much information to go through all the categories on the business cards just in one video, but I do have another video about all of the three ink cards. Uh, I'll link to that at the end of this video. Lastly, I'd like to give a few tips for maximizing the value out of the Chase Superfector right now at the end of 2020. So first tip is to apply for either the Freedom Flex or the Freedom Unlimited. That supermarket sign up bonus, five points per dollar and up to $12,000 worth of spending in the first year is just a no brainer. You'll earn a huge amount of points. Number two, also on the Chase Freedom Flex or the regular Freedom, it is possible to stack the quarterly category and some of the temporary promotions. I'll show you what I mean. So you could pay for Lyft through PayPal and you get an extra 4X twice to make 9X. So you don't get the base multiplier, which is one point per dollar, but Lyft is, uh, it adds an extra four points and also the quarterly category, which is PayPal, adds an extra four points as well. And this photo was shared by someone in our Credit Dojo Facebook group. So feel free to join that group as well on Facebook um, if you're interested in little tips like this. But anyway, you can stack the rewards to get nine points per dollar in certain cases. Then number three, if you already have a Sapphire card, but you want to get a, another sign-up bonus, you want to take advantage of this really high sign-up bonus on the Sapphire Preferred, you could consider downgrading your Sapphire to a Freedom as long as it's been more than 48 months, which is four years since you originally got the bonus on your Sapphire, and then go ahead and apply for the Sapphire Preferred again and get the 80,000 point sign-up bonus, all right? Because that's the rule. Um, you can only have one Sapphire at a time and you can only get a bonus on a Sapphire if it's been at least four years since you got the bonus before, all right? Now, obviously your credit score has to be at the right level for this, you know, being approved is never 100% guaranteed. So do be careful with this, but it's maybe something you might want to consider just because that bonus is so high. Now, another tip with the Chase system. So this is tip number four, and that's the new pay yourself back feature. And this is a feature where you can use the points to pay yourself back for charges on the card. On the Sapphire Preferred, it's 1.25 cents per point. And on the Sapphire Reserve, it's 1.5 cents per point. So you get a better rate uh, than if you were just redeeming for cashback. However, it's only in certain categories. Right now, the categories are dining, supermarkets, home improvement stores, and charities. Now, normally I wouldn't recommend this. Um, you know, I would recommend saving the points for travel, but some people right now perhaps aren't really traveling anyway. And also some people may have built up high balances on their cards uh, because of the lockdowns and losing a job or whatever. So this is a way to get some more value out of your points rather than just the normal one cent per point for cashback. I actually have another video about this feature detailing the whole thing. I'll put it on the end of this video. And one last tip, number five, chase points are currently worth up to 50% more. So that's 1.5 cents per point when redeeming for products in the Apple store through Ultimate Rewards. 50% is on the Sapphire Reserve and some other cards also have this deal at lower multipliers. So maybe I'll do a video explaining it all, but this is a temporary deal and it's only available until November 15th. So guys, I know this hasn't been a 100% exhaustive video, but I hope it has given you some ideas of the amount of value you can get out of the Chase Superfecta right now at the end of 2020 and how it stacks up against other trifectas and quad vectors and super vectors and whatever from City and Amex, all right? Um, if you're interested in the Chase Sapphire Preferred with that current 80,000 point sign up bonus, or also the Chase Freedom Flex with the awesome 5% uh, at grocery stores for a year on up to $12,000 worth of spending, I'll put both of the links below for you guys to learn more about them and check them out. As always, they are affiliate links, help out our show. Advertise disclosure right at the bottom of the description section of this video. Please subscribe if you're new, leave a comment about the Chase Superfector, how much value you're getting from it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.